Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Attempster. Today I'm going to be going over how to add a loading screen to your games in the Blender Game Engine. Now typically the Blender Game Engine, when it does load something in, it sort of loads the entire game in at once. So it will sort of have a just do it mentality where it just dumps everything into the game all at once at the start. And that can lead to problems such as it freezing and then the next few frames of the game sort of being very slow and other problems like that. So you might, for example, if you have the executable, you might have problems where it just sort of goes white screen for about 10 seconds until it's loaded everything and then uh, you'll be able to actually play the game. Now the ideal solution to loading a game is to sort of preload all the assets and everything the viewer will be seeing. So here I have an example of the loading working. So if I press P, we have loading and then I'm set to this camera here. Now what's happening is I have a load camera here and that is basically scanning through the entire scene. And once it's finished doing that, we'll switch back to the players view here. So the reason that this is good is if you do have a massive game scene and you have any sort of lag or anything, uh, then the only part that will be affected is this little spinning icon here. So if we do have any lag, that might stutter a little bit, uh, but that isn't really a problem as that's probably what the user is expecting as it is just loading. So let's go ahead and quickly make this from scratch. So let's go ahead, open up a new blend file, add ourselves a plane, it's going to be the floor. Let's just make it fairly long. And uh, let's go ahead and add in maybe a sphere like we had before. We'll give it a new material, maybe make it a purplish color. And then let's go ahead and give it some level of detail. So before we do that, blend a game engine, generate the level of detail. Uh, and you can change these distances if you want to. Um, let's just make it 10 and 15. And then put these two on layer 2, M, and move to layer 2. Now this is going to be our level of detail object. Now when our load camera does go through the scene, uh, it will get closer to these objects, so you'll get the high resolution loaded, and then as it gets further away, it will load in the low resolution as well, uh, which can be extremely beneficial if you have lots of uh, level of detail objects, as they won't sort of all lag at once when you try to play the game. All right, and so then what we're going to do is press tab U and unwrap, and before we do that, control A, apply the scale, and do it again. Then let's go over to the render settings, GOSL animation frame rate of 60, and now if we go into shade of view, that looks fine. So let's go ahead and add ourselves a material for the floor. Give it a texture, this can be anything. All right, cool, so I have my texture selected here. Now let's go ahead and say this is gonna be our main camera. So RY, uh, Z90 and Y90. Then let's move it over here. This is gonna be uh, the player camera, so where they start off from. Okay, this seems good. Now, You'll probably want to have proper movement for this, but I'm just going to go ahead and add in an always, and I'm going to add in a mouse. So mouse look. All right, so if you want to, you can add movement as well, but I'm just going to keep it simple. And so this is going to be my main camera. So let's go ahead and put in, or maybe just player camera. And then what we want to do is press Shift D to duplicate, move it across, delete all the logic here, and change this to load. Oh, load camera. And then what I'm going to do is call this main, the scene here, make a new scene, copy settings, and go ahead and call this load. Now on the load scene here, I'm going to go ahead and add myself a camera, Alt R to get rid of the rotation, move it up, Shift A, add a plane, S to scale, and um, yeah, just fill up the camera's view. This is going to be black, just by itself. If you want to have another color or a picture or something, you can add that in as well. Then what I'm going to do is press Shift A, add some text, move it up, uh, press Tab, and we're just going to type in loading, put three dots, Alt C to convert it to a mesh. When you convert it, you can't change it anymore, so just be aware of that. Um, but it will keep it nice and solid for us. Then we're going to click New, turn that off, choose Shadeless, and scroll up. All right, now let's go ahead and add in our sort of loading wheel or spinning thing. And to do that, we can go ahead and add a circle. Move it over here, tab, E to extrude, S to scale. And then we're gonna press tab again, A to select everything, T. And here we're going to flip the direction. So we want uh, the normals facing upwards. Uh, then tab, and let's select face select mode. Select all three or four, 
and delete them. Now with the normal problem that we had before, if you want to double check, what you can do, just in case you've accidentally done them the wrong way around, is you can go press tab, and then under display, choose face, and set the normals. So you want these blue lines facing upwards towards the player, because the back face here won't get rendered. So yep, that's about it. Let's move it up and scale it in, number zero, and move it down to the corner here. So on our circle here, we're going to go ahead, add an always, add a motion, and we'll just uh, set it to spinning. All right, so now if you press P, oh, and we go over into texture view, and we need to give it a shadeless material. There we go. This is what it's going to look like. So now let's go back to our main screen here and then sort out our load camera. So down here, I'm going to make a new window, timeline, frame zero, and let's move it all the way forward here and let's choose the rotation. Maybe we want it looking at the ground because there's uh, something interesting there. Control and numpad zero to go into this view with it selected. And then what we're going to do is press I, location, rotation. And the good thing with location rotation is you can choose which objects this camera is looking at. So if you have a really dense area with lots of objects in it, you might want to point this camera at it so they all get loaded in. Maybe say frame 20, uh, number at zero, and I'm going to change the rotation, RY and RZ. Maybe we just want it to look over here. I insert location rotation. And then at frame 60, I'm going to press Alt R, get rid of the rotation, RZ 90, RY 90 and let's just move it all the way back to where the player is. All right, and then I enter location rotation. All right, so here we're gonna add an always, add an action. This is gonna be our load action that we just created. It's gonna be 60 frames long, as you can see here. It's the last one. And then what I'm gonna do is add an actuator. And from in here, choose the action, as you can see here. And then we're gonna choose NAND. And this is basically when this isn't being activated. So basically once it's finished. So, uh, yeah, all of those minimized. Now, when that does happen, we also want to add in the loading screen. So add an overlay, loading screen, join that in. And then over here, add a, another scene. And this is going to be joined to once the animation has finished. And what we want to do is set the camera to main. And then we also want another scene, and it's going to remove the overlay. So remove load. Now down here in the uh, scene settings, we've actually done something wrong. We need the camera, and we need to set it to the player camera. Now also what we're going to do is add one more thing here, the scene. Join it up to the first one, and this is going to set the camera to be the load camera. All right, and I guess we can move it up. And then that should be about it. So now if we press P, we'll get loading, and now we're loaded in, and we're all done. So the good thing about this is it will load in all the lights, all the level of detail objects, uh, all the different parts of the game that you need to load, and if there is any lag or any problems putting it in, frame rate drops or something, you'll only see a difference in the spinning icon here. You won't actually have any sort of gameplay issues with the frame rate dropping. Either way, that's the end of this tutorial. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know with a like, comment, or share down below. All of that stuff would be greatly appreciated. If you'd like to stay up to date with weekly Blender Game Engine content, feel free to subscribe as well. Also, if your blend file didn't work out or you have any other questions or anything, um, there will be a finished op blend down in the description below. But apart from that, hope you enjoyed the video. Have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys in the next one.